Amid growing security threats facing the Korean Peninsula and the world, especially North Korea and Russia looking to collaborate militarily, a veteran South Korean diplomat told Arirang News that Seoul should press on with its value-based diplomacy. Our Oh Soo Young has more. South Korea must continue to take a principled approach to security and diplomacy as its scope of global interests expands beyond the Korean Peninsula. That's according to Ahn Young, former South Korean ambassador to the United States. First, as Ho faces a nuclear North Korea that appears to be aligning with China and Russia, and said the Camp David summit between the leaders of Seoul, Washington and Tokyo last month came at a crucial time as they forged a three-way approach to regional and economic security and engagement with other Indo-Pacific countries. When I talk about the timing, we should be thinking about the Russian invasion of Ukraine. And then now, Chairman Kim Jong-un is coming to visit Russia. And then they talk about exchanges of arms arms for high technology, for missiles, for submarines, nuclear submarines, and satellites. And then what, what China is doing in our part of the world, in East China Sea, in South China Sea, putting them all together, this in fact is a very challenging time. Though under pressure from Beijing, and says Ho must continue to act in line with its core values. That is to say, liberal democracy, human rights, rule of law, we in fact must let China understand that we in fact are very much interested in continuing to develop relationship with China, but we will have to do it on our own core values and on the basis of mutual respect and on the basis of mutual benefit. And I think Yun, Yun government, President Yun government, has been very consistent in conveying that message to China. These days, I'm under the impression that Beijing begins to understand what President Yun's approach is to Beijing. While pushing for a trilateral summit with Tokyo and Beijing, President Yun Seo last week pressed China to contain North Korea's weapons program and warned against military cooperation with Pyongyang ahead of Kim Jong-un's meeting with Vladimir Putin. Yun further said unilateral actions to change the status quo in the South China Sea are unacceptable and Russia's invasion of Ukraine is unlawful. In light of ideological divisions seen among the G20 members, Seoul's active push for global norms and cooperation has fueled talk of the Group of Seven possibly expanding to a G9. And I think given that, that reality, I think the, there should be renewed understanding about the importance of G7. What I find interesting is this idea of Korea and Australia joining G7, that idea in fact is being discussed more often in uh, Washington DC rather than, than in Seoul. That's something I find interesting. The former ambassador at large for the G20 says he is encouraged by Yoon's multilateral diplomacy and multi-million dollar pledges to tackle the global climate crisis and reconstruct Ukraine. Well, Korea as a nation has uh, developed enormously over the past 70 years. And then I think the basic orientation of the country has been opening up liberalization and engagement. That, in fact, has the overall direction of the country. And then I think we must keep on doing that. Ahead of further challenges with major elections coming up in 2024, including the possible return of Donald Trump as U.S. president, and again highlighted the importance of liberal democracies, comprising skillful bureaucrats, academics, opinion leaders and journalists, keeping societies free. So they are the kind of efforts we must continue in the days to come, including the efforts you are making at Arirang TV. The diplomat said he hopes to see South Korea lead by example for global peace and development, particularly as it aims to host the 2030 World Expo in Busan City, sharing the country's journey, growth and vision for a sustainable future as a global pivotal state. Oh Soo-young, Arirang News.